Good morning everyone. It's time for another quick company analysis. This time looking at ShopRite Holdings Limited. So of course a company listed on the Johannesburg Securities Exchange in South Africa. Considering the share price of ShopRite, um, the ShopRite group at this point, we see a nice run up since 2008. In 2008, the share price was about 39, 39.49 cents per share to about 185 rand 50 per share. So if you got in at 2008 um, to this point, you would have done very well in the share. Looking at the diluted earnings per share, um, at this point we can see that there is somewhat of a growth um, in the diluted EPS position of the company. Um, importantly, if we look at this growth of the diluted earnings per share on a year-on-year -year basis, we will see that the growth from 2008 to 2009 was 30%, 2009 to 2010, 16%, 2010 to 2011, 11%, then it jumped back to 19% from 2011 to 2012, and then now back to 9%. So there's somewhat of a drop in the average um, in the average diluted earnings per share growth of the company, which I'll get to again. Considering the price to earnings ratio of the company, we see that in 2008 it was 13.3 times earnings and 1 times earnings. But notice please this uh, drop from 27.5 to 26.1, which is the first time that the PE multiple started to contract um, since, well, around about 2008. So if you are long in this share at this point, I would um, recommend exercising caution at this point. Um, this video is of course not to give investment advice, it's educational. But should somebody be looking at this, um, perhaps considering this drop in the PE ratio with the reduced growth rate in the earnings per share would be prudent. Now moving over to the revenue and cost of sales of the company, we'll see that both, both of these grew pretty much in proportion. In 2012, the total growth in revenue was about, or the total revenue of the company was about 82 billion or 83 billion rand. Um, in 2008, it was about 47 billion rand. Looking at the total assets and total liabilities position of the company, um, we can see that around about 2012 we are seeing an increase in both. Both the assets and the liabilities of the company have increased, or has increased rather. Now moving over to the margin positions, we see that very similar to my previous video on the Foschini group, um, we see a, a drop in gross profit margin from 08 to 09, and then a steady growth um, up to 20.52% um, in the gross profit margin. The operating profit margin position has improved. Um, you'll see that it was 4.9% in 2008 and now it's 5.64% in 2012. The net profit margin also improved somewhat um, from 3.33% in 2008 to 368 in 2012. Now considering the sales to total assets, um, which provides an idea about the company's revenue um, in relation to the asset or the total asset position, we'll see that it had somewhat of an improvement um, up to 2010 and it has started to reduce, um, to worsen shall I say. Um, so it was 12.22% in 2011 and now it's 9.85% in 2012. Return on stockholders' equity, which um, provides an indication of the profit after tax um, in relation to the stockholders' equity position. We see that it reached a high point in returns on in 2009, and it has since weakened a bit to 23.76%, also something to take note of. Looking at the current position of the ShopRite group, 
um, we'll, we see an interesting pattern. Um, like I said previously, um, the asset position was added to, and especially the current asset position. This um, seems to me as if it has to do with the total cash position, cash position of the company, but I'll, I'll show that a bit later. So inventory making up a substantial portion of the current assets, of course, and current liabilities as one would expect from a retailer also fairly high. Now the current ratio, um, the current assets to current liabilities has improved. Um, in 2008 it was 1.1 times um, assets to current, current assets to current liabilities and now it's 1.5 times current assets to current liabilities. This trend seems to me um, very typical of the companies in the JC at the moment um, that they are bolstering their short-term positions and especially the cash positions and not investing or expanding but rather keeping money back um, owing to the political and economic uncertainty. Looking at the debt to equity ratio, which is um, the total debt in relation to stockholders' equity, we will see that it was about a high point of 232 percent debt to equity um, and it has improved since to 141.3 percent debt to equity. Now the debt to equity ratios depends on the sector of the industry and also the, the market that you are trading in but um, this is fairly um, in line with my hypothesis that the companies are preparing for short-term uncertainty one would expect them to reduce debt and this appears apparent in these um, calculations. Now the asset test ratio of course um, which uh, gives an indication on the company's ability to cover their current liabilities and um, with current assets less inventory and um, without taking inventory into consideration has also improved. It's almost one to one um, so it's 0 0.8 percent current assets to current liabilities and um, from 0 0.3 which is a substantial jump from 2011 to 2012. Considering the debt to assets ratio, which is simply the total assets to total debt, um, we see it was 1.5 in 2008 and 1.7, the company, of course, adding to assets. Now, looking, considering the inventory to net working capital, we'll see that this measure was very negative in 2009, um, but it has since improved to a positive territory in 136.5% in 2012. Now finally I want to look at the cash holdings again. You can see that since 2008 ShopRite has kept back cash in the order of about 3.1 to 1.9 billion Rand but has since um, upped the cash, cash position to 7.9 billion Rand which is very interesting. Now to summarize the observations here we can say that the ShopRite share price has increased about 370% since 2008. It appears to have reached an inflection point though in the technicals. Um, if we pull up the technicals of the company, um, what I mean by inflection point of this is we, the share price had a massive run up uh, from around about 2007 thereabouts. It had a, had a run up in the share price and it has since consolidated um, and it is now in this massive consolidation pattern. Of course, a downside consolidation, technical traders would tell you that there's about a 70% likelihood of a downside breakout. And if we consider that with the MACD indicator here, which is a momentum indicator, we can see that should it break over this line, um, we can expect some further downside. Now, the dilute. Diluted earnings per share growth has grown about 16% on average year on year since 2008. So since 2008, the diluted earnings per share was about 16% growth. Now this trend appears to be slowing. And if we look at this again, we can see that it was about 30% growth in um, 2008 to 2009. 16, which is about the average. And now it has only grown 9%. So if the earnings is gro growth is slowing, um, long positions in the share should really um, take care of their positions at the moment, I'll say. 
Now the price to earnings ratio is currently at 26.1% earnings from a high point of 27.5 times in 2012. I'm just moving back to that chart. If you look at the PE ratio, it was a low in 2008 and we had a multiple expansion up to 27.5. Now the question at this point is whether we are going to see a multiple contraction. Multiple contractions are, of course, the real long killer in a sense, because if we have declining EPS growth with a contraction of the market multiple, you should expect the price to actually lose much ground. As I'm saying here, it can be summarized as follows. This is concerning since the average PE ratio of the JSE is estimated to be about 14 times earnings. Longs should trade carefully at this point and be wary of a market price to earnings breakdown. Also keep a close eye on the year on year earnings of the company as I showed on the diluted earnings per share but also on the overall earnings. The three main margins appear to show some improvement which is positive. The sales to total assets ratio has weakened since 2010, that's something to consider. The return on equity ratio seems to have weakened significantly from 40.14% in 2009 to 27.6% in 2012. The current ratio shows improvement from 1.1 in 2008 to 1 1.5 in 2012, which may likely owe to the increase of ShopRite's cash position. The debt to equity position has improved from 233% debt to equity to 141% debt to equity. As I said, um, the company seems to be bolstering for short-term uncertainty. The asset test ratio has strengthened from 0.3 to 0.8, which is a significant percentage. The debt to assets position has also improved from 1.5 to 1.7. Now inventory to net working capital has improved from very negative positions. The cash, cash position has increased substantially from 1.9 billion to 7.9 billion. Now as is the case with many of the JSE listed companies, ShopRite appears to be bolstering their short term position likely because of political and market uncertainty. And the fair warning, um, what I am looking at for this year is the concern about the multiple, a possible multiple contraction of the overall JSE market, along with the diluted earnings per share coming under pressure. Um, so this was a quick company analysis on ShopRite Holdings Limited. My name is Gerard van Anselen, and thank you. I'll talk to you again.